Hi guys, I'm back. I have no idea uh, why technology, we have a full moon, why technology decided to just go dark on me. My entire computer shut down and I had to restart everything. Um, oh my goodness. Hi. Um, but now I can see the chat and, um, you know, I'm just going to continue with the psychology being investigated. So hi, Kylie. Hi guys. I can see you now. Um, okay. So if you, um, are watching this video and you're like, wait, this is the first video that I watch. I have another shirt like this on in the other video. You got to watch that one first. Hi. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe this happened. It's a full moon outside guys. It's a full moon out there. It's beautiful. Okay. So we were talking about the diffusion of responsibility and Pelyavin. And basically I was saying that we didn't really even test the diffusion of responsibility for the psychology being investigated because people couldn't leave. And that's kind of part of the diffusion of responsibility is that people leave and they don't help. And I mean, I guess people went to the other side of the train, but I mean, that's up to you to, um, you know, kind of argue. Okay. Yamamoto theory of mind, our capacity to understand the intentions and the needs of others. Some believe this is unique to humans. So if, if you don't know what altruism, that is something else, um, Yes, you should all doodle while you listen to me. That's a great idea. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, altruism is the idea that you're helping another person in a way that benefits the other person more than it benefits you. And in this case, we've seen altruism, um, you know, within species and um, across species, you know, just like, you know, the birds, I don't know what the names my husband knows, all those birds that sit on cows and eat their bugs or the, the fish that the sucker fish that eat the algae off other fish. That's all altruistic behavior that we see in animals. All right. But now we get to talk about grave guys. This is what you came for. I know this is what you came for. We're going to talk about grave. We're going to evaluate every single one of the studies. Okay. Yes, it's connected to empathy, okay? Altru altruism is connected to theory of mind because in altruism, you have to understand what the other person or other species or the other thing needs without actively communicating, okay? And that's kind of what we um, are talking about here, even in Yamamoto, okay? They, they see the juice, you know, they're not saying, hey, man, can you help me get this juice? But... They are passing tools over and it is important. Yes. In Yamamoto, it is important to know that no tools were passed without some initi initiation from the chimpanzee that needed the tools. They always put their hand in that hole and was like, me, 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 me. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. <laughs> you don't know anything about Yamamoto. Oh my gosh. Okay. You need to know that there were five participants they did a can see, can not see condition. Um, there is altruistic behavior. <laughs> okay, let's go through all of the grave. Okay, let's do this. So if you're in the Google Classroom, guys, you can even follow along with me. Um, you see, hopefully you can see these. All right, these are cards that I have in the Google Classroom. Um, and we're going to go over these and we're going to basically, if you need to do that 10 point evaluation question on paper one tomorrow, um, or whenever you're taking it, okay, you're going to do that one first. Okay. So now that we're studying this, you're going to do those big questions first. Okay. Join the Google classroom. How can you join the Google classroom? Um, it is a $25 donation and you get access to everything listed on there. Um, it is in my about section on YouTube. It is also in almost every single one of my videos. Um, so uh, I might not get to you in the next 20 minutes though, um, because I'm doing this live right now, but I will check that as soon as we are done um, just to make sure. And I did send somebody else through kind of while I was rebooting my computer. Okay. Yeah, in the description. Um, it may not be in the description of this video just because I, I I popped up as quickly as I could. I was like, seriously? Today? 
Okay. The first part of these these two videos was about the psychology being investigated. Now we are going to start grave. Okay. Yes, there are definitely past papers um, all over the internet. You can go and you can look up. There, there is a bunch of stuff for free. The Google Classroom is basically um, a collection of all of my teaching materials that I've created um, and used on my own students the past uh, since 2000, since the syllabus came out, before the syllabus came out, even the 9698 syllabus, when a few of these studies were still in there. Okay. Um, yeah, my psych tutor, there's, um, there's, you know, even some of the information on 9698, if the studies are applicable to it, because there are some core studies that they did take over into this one. Okay. And I think they're going to do that every single time. All right. Um, I do have a video on grading paper one. So if you want to go through that, I would suggest going through that. Um, I will link that down below once I'm done this video. Okay. So let's get to grave guys. Okay. Because this is the evaluation question. You're going to start with this question because you're going to want to get all the points that you can. This is 10 points. You know how many two point questions you got to do in order to get 10 points? Yes, that's right. Five. <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So, um, let's see. I didn't put the names on these. Who are we starting with here? Okay, so let's start with biological. Let's start with Canley, okay? So remember, grave. Can you guys see that? Okay, grave. It's generalizability, reliability, application, which is the usefulness of the study, um, validity and ethics. Okay. So I'm going to ignore the chat for a little while. You guys can go ahead and talk. It's probably the first time your teacher ever says to talk while she's talking. All right. Maybe some of you do, do want to listen to this because your exam's coming up. So grave was kind of created as an easy way to remember a few of the methods of the methodologies that are the important parts of the study that will help you to evaluate. And when you're evaluating, you're basically coming up with an answer at the end that's saying whether or not the study was good or bad. If you were asked to discuss something, you don't have to come up with that last kind of general statement that says the study was good or bad. You're just weighing the, you're just basically telling me two strengths and two weaknesses. When you evaluate the study, you want to try to make it a little bit even, but I mean, if you're going to tell me the study was good, I would probably put at least one more good or positive um, strength of the study than I would a weakness. Okay. Because that's going to make your paper more believable. You don't want to only talk about weaknesses and then say the paper was great. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now for generalization of Canley, we have 10 right-handed females. So we cannot generalize this to left-handed people. We cannot even generalize this to anybody but females. And this has some type of motivational bias because they were all part of some research group. So um, basically, by having all of that stuff in common, this is going to reduce the validity of the sample of this research. Females were chosen for the study specifically because the researchers thought that they would have a higher emotional response, which that question has been asked on papers before. And it might re they might react differently to the scenes that they were presented. So they genuinely thought that women would react like more emotionally than men would. So that's why we chose only men. Okay. Yeah. We are doing Canley right now. Reliability. The study had high controls and was standardized, so it would be easy to replicate. Data retrieved was subjective. Therefore, we cannot say for certain the data would be similar if repeated, especially if there are any left-handed or male participants. So um, remember, this study is based off subjective data. We see a scene, and then we rate the scene, and, the, and that rating is basically subjective. It's based off of our past experiences, things we've seen on TV, experience in real life. Okay. Application. Is this study useful? Canley found an association between emotional impact 
um, on the participant and subsequent memory for the item, which is basically saying that there's an impact on the amygdala on images that are highly emotional and the more highly emotional, the more memorable. So therefore there's, there's some connection between memory and the amygdala. Okay. Um, understanding this correlation or this conclusion may help doctors understand damages to the brain if patients lack intense emotional responses. So, I mean, imagine if you see a child that has been through trauma um, and they are standing there and they are perfectly fine and content and they have no emotional response at all. You might assume that there is some damage to the amygdala, okay? Now, validity. Standardized procedures um, such as you know, the length of image shown, the intervals high in had basically make it have high internal validity. We can, we are sure that the length of time that someone saw the image did not impact how people, you know, how they labeled it, that independent variable zero, one, two, or three, because if someone was able to look at a, an image for 10 minutes and someone was able to see it for 30 seconds, the person in 10 minutes might be more emotional. They might've worked themselves up a little bit more. They might've seen more of the image, if that makes sense to you. Okay. So, um, we have good internal validity, but we also have, um, poor ecological validity, which is the environment. So just the task of, of labeling emotional images while you're in an fMRI machine getting scanned, that is very low, um, ecological validity and the demand characteristics are going to be a little high in that. Ethics of this study, informed consent was given to all the participants. They were aware of the nature of the experiment. Um, deception participants were unaware of the follow-up that happened three weeks later. All right. <clears throat> Let's do Dement and Kleitman. Okay, so generalization. We had both gender, genders in the study. Remember, we started off with um, nine participants, but, um, you know, that sample size did get a little bit smaller. So, and we have college students who come from all over the world. So, we have so many um, factors and variables that are not controlled in the study and we do not have a, a large sample so we cannot generalize this study to the public unfortunately reliability the study was standardized and many controls were put in place such as using a doorbell to wake up participants limiting their caffeine and alcohol intake and the um and all of these basically increase the reliability of the study the use of scientific equipment also increased the reliability. They can use these scientific equipment things. Um, you know, I, mean, I said that like, like I didn't know what I was talking about. The, the, these things, <laughs> all these, any, any and all scientific equipment is going to re increase the reliability because it's a machine. It has no emotions. It's objective. It happens the same way over and over, except for on today when your computer just goes dead, when you're, you know, prepping students for an exam the next day. <laughs> Okay. Um, application. We will get to Bandura. Yes. Bobo doll, all that stuff guys. Um, okay. Studying dreams is, is usually difficult as participants are not responsive when they're sleeping. Right. So we have to ask them when they're not dreaming. Think about it. Um, basically, by being able to see that brainwave activity in humans, we can assume that other animals who display similar patterns of dr dream as well. So um, it is useful to see that all of our participants had very similar activity in their brains. All of our participants had very similar timing periods of REM. Okay. So um, this is going to help with, um, sleep disorders, um, anything, sleep apnea, disruptions in sleep. We're going to be able to see what stage of sleep we're going to, we're going to see if, um, dreams are affecting it, what type of rays, gamma rays, theta, delta, what, you know, and so forth. Okay. The validity of dement, the definition of dreams was operationalized as a recollection to, uh, that included content rather than just having the impression that they had been dreaming. So that increased the validity when asked to estimate how long they've been dreaming, 
their choice limit was limited to five or 15. This is going to increase the the validity because participant variables are going to be small. We're not going to have a hundred different answers of five minutes, six minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you know, a hundred minutes. It's just going to be very easy five and 15 minute answers. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to say that we had low ecological validity, although people slept in beds. Um, it was a certain bedtime. Um, they were not in their house. They had electrodes on their heads and people don't usually sleep that way. So we have low ecological validity. Um, I would say the study had pretty good mundane realism though. Ethics. So um, deception of participant WD, okay, which if I'm telling you that the participants initials are WD, that you know that autonomy was not kept in informed consent, right? Okay. Um, that's about it. Everybody was debriefed afterwards. Okay, Schachter and Singer. All right, guys, are you listening up? Who needs Schachter and Singer? You guys in Florida? I'm in Southwest Florida. All right, who needs Schachter and Singer? Let's do Schachter and Singer. Okay, so the sample, we have 185 males. They were all college students and they all got credit. Okay. They all got credit for being in the study. Now the sample that participated in the study, there's only 184 because one person chickened out the last minute. He didn't want to get the injection. Okay. So we have an ethnocentric and a gender bias in the study. We also have a motivational bias. We all had volunteers and they all received course credit. Okay. Reliability. We have a double blind study, which basically this means that our participants didn't know what categories of the independent variable they were in, and our observers did not know who was in what group. So basically, this enabled us, um, for example, in the anger classroom, those who were informed that they were going to have irritable symptoms, those people rated themselves as being the angriest. But according to our observers who were double blind and didn't know who was in what what condition they actually wrote down that those in the ignorant group displayed the angriest behavior. Okay. So double blinds are really important. This is going to in, um, increase the reliability of the study. Okay. So we had pretty good reliability application <clears throat> brain waves and eye movement is useful because it is a collection of physiological evidence about the brain and its activity as it provides direct evidence for the underlying biological processes. So in saying the similar studies like Schachter and Singer provide evidence that emotions are a direct effect of our thoughts um, and basically regarding our environment, we can use this in the real world by knowing one's environment can increase one's happiness or decrease it. Use this in schools, make classrooms fun and energizing Fun and happy places and atmospheres can create fun and happy places like uh, or, or, um, fun and happy people like hospitals or prisons. I mean, what if all prisons were all pink and had Hello Kitty on the wall everywhere? All right. <laughs> okay. Validity. Internal validity. So due to the fact that we are using college students, which could decrease the validity because it's so many different internal factors. These people are coming from everywhere and we don't know much about them. Some people might have a high or lower tolerance for adrenaline that we didn't know about, which could have changed their physiolo physiological aspects of the study. Um, so we're going to say that the internal validity was low, but also the external validity was low. Um, this was a lab setting and, you know, they were saying it was a drug for eyes. They did get an eye exam after they were given the drug, but then they were told to go wait in this room and 
all that other stuff that happened in the room, the, the validity, the ecological validity was really low of the study. Ethics. Okay. What was right with this study? <laughs> what was right with it? What happened? Um, informed consent was not fully given. They consented to suproxin, not adrenaline. There was deception. The stooge was used um, for automatic deception. Participants also assumed the study was about vision. Some participants in the anger group found out that this was all a hoax and they left. Um, there was a right to, to withdraw. Participants who did figure out they were allowed to leave and participants were debriefed afterwards. Okay. All right. Let's go to our next group. guys talking about weddings oh my gosh i miss being in class and listening to all the crazy gossip that you guys do <laughs> okay let's do bandura okay whoever needs bandura listen up guys generalizability of bandura there were actually only six children in each experimental condition. Okay. I know it's 72 children. There were 36 boys and 36 girls, which if we get to any gender, then we can say that it's applicable to both genders. Um, but it's kind of a really small sample. If you think about it, we had so many conditions that we had to break them all up. Okay. Um, it, Let's see. It is possible that the children were quite similar as they all attended the same nursery based at the university, suggesting um, they all had, you know, academically able parents. OK, so they they grew up in, in similar knowledgeable households, similar academic households, you could say. OK, Um so just based on the fact that it's an isolated population, we can't generalize this. But we did have boys and girls, okay? So maybe uh, it's not generalizable, guys, okay? Reliability. Each child within a condition experienced exactly the same exposure. This increased the reliability. So we're basically saying that it had really good standardized procedures. There were inter-observer reliability. That was really good. Um, and that was in the one-way mirror that was done while we observed our um, children. Remember, we took 120 instances of data. Is that it? Um, we basically looked um, every five seconds. We looked down and we looked up and we said, what's that kid doing? Let's write it down. We looked up. What's that kid doing? We had two people doing that. And then we took their data and compared it. And we had really high. So our reliability is really good in, ban in uh, this Bandura study. Now, application or the usefulness of this, okay? Each child within a condition... Oh, I'm sorry. I just... Reliability. Sorry. Application. Uh, the nature versus nurture debate. We can see that boys and girls differ. Um, if it is nurture, then boys have been conditioned to imitate and it's something we can stop if it's nature. So um, boys might be born predisposed to um, watch other male role models so um, or watch other aggressive behavior. So we're basically saying that it's very possible that um, if it was, you know, simply genetics, then it would have to do with survival, okay? If it was simply genetics saying that, um, it, I mean, I'm basically going back and forth because you can, you can say that some of this is nature and some of this is nurture, okay? Boys might be born predisposed, okay? It might be something that we're born to do or society could show us, you know, through things like media or video games. Um, and, you know, therefore, 
they're more used to it. I don't know. But I think the study is pointing a little bit more towards um, nature than nurture. Okay. Now, validity. We have good controls of extraneous variables, specifically ensuring that there was a possibility that the children in any condition would show aggression. Remember that nice room in that second group? in that second room where we showed the kids those nice toys and then we kind of took them away and we said, oh, sorry, you can't play with these. Okay. Um, so that was really good. Increase the validity. Um, ethics. I'm going to, well, okay. You can also say it had high ecological validity because they were in a classroom that they were normally in classrooms of those types of setting. They were in a nursery classroom anyway. Okay. The ethics of Bandura is a little iffy, guys. Okay, this study has children do no harm. Well, we basically taught children to behave violently and aggressively. Unfortunately, that is not good. <laughs> there was no parental consent. Bandura asked the nursery school teacher if he could do the study. Okay, um, there was no debriefing that was done. The parents probably don't even know that the study was done. Okay. You have to be careful when you're, when you're working with children under 16, under 14, getting informed consent from their parents. Okay. Now let's do Savidra and Silverman button phobia. Okay. Since the study is a case study, the sample is small and difficult to generalize. The participants were di the participant was diagnosed with a particular button phobia, um, and this makes this case less representative to the population, which is technically the point of a case study anyway. So, no case studies are going to be generalizable. Reliability. There were no standardized procedures. There was there was really no experiments that happened or that went on. Okay. So low reliability in Savidra and Silverman application. We found our patient no longer classified as having a phobia. This supports the use of positive reinforcement exposure and exposure therapies for other future behavior and psychological fears. If we can learn it, then it's possible to unlearn it like bad manners. Okay. So apply this to the real world. If we can learn bad behaviors, then we're basically saying that it's possible to unlearn them or rehabilitate people. Okay. The validity of Savidra and Silverman working one-on-one -on -one with um, a researcher creates a really strong rapport, almost too strong to where you can create an experiment or bias. Okay. Um, so there's less objectivity there's, there's less anonymity, um, less bias, I'm sorry, more bias. So the validity of the study was really low. It does have some good ecological validity because a lot of the positive reinforcement was done in the boy's home with his mother. So, I mean, that was natural. Ethics. Uh, the boy and his mother gave informed consent. This was important as the therapy involved direct exposure to distressing stimuli. Um, whether it was a real or imagined, it was still kind of distressing. Um, okay. So overall, Savidra and Silverman was not a good study um, because it was a case study. It really wasn't an experiment. Okay. Pepperberg parrot learning. Generalizability. Since this is a case study on parrots, it's hard to generalize. As the parrot was a trained laboratory animal, it would be hard to say that it is representative of a general population. Okay, and now what are we talking about? We can't really be talking about wild parrots because we have a captive parrot. So this is only going to be generalized, generalizable to captive parrots. Um, reliability. Alex suffered from boredom at times, hence... They varied his training and testing schedules in order to control for repetitive behaviors that were not related to the learning process. The reliability was okay, but could have improved by increasing the number of repetitions in each measurement. Consequently, this is the opposite approach used to prevent boredom. So the reliability of the study is going to be really low because it was it was basically used, it was catered around Alex. So trying to use this exact um, technique on another parrot might not work. 
Application. Parent co paracognition shows how non-primate animals can be taught to communicate using reinforcement. We can see that other animals are able to apply reason to abstract thoughts. Animal intel intelligence can mean competition for humans. Um, you know, we use a lot of therapy animals today and animals can be used to replace humans just like robots and machines and things like that. So when we're thinking about, when we're thinking about application, um, you can kind of link in any of those examples. Validity. Also the trainer, the, which is not the original trainer of Alex, um, who trained him on same or different. So basically, um, the validity is going to increase because we know that the parrot was not just responding to his original trainer. Okay. So, um, the ethics of Alex, Alex was reported to be well treated and he did not appear to be physically harmed. Researchers acknowledge that the species of parrots involved is fairly intelligent. Um, and basically being kept in an artificial setting is not, natural for a bird's environment like that. But I guess if he was born in captivity, it's natural to him, right? Okay. Okay, so let's do Andrade doodling. Participants varied in age. So we're talking about generalizability. Participants um, you know, there was no representative age really, but volunteered. Okay. So there is some type of motivational bias that we have to take into consideration. The majority of the participants were women, um, but it's still representative, represented both genders. Um, but it's not going to be a broad representation of the world. So reliability, since all participants were equally bored, they could be sure that the differences um, were due to doodling and not the increase of the reliability. That actually has to do with a little bit more validity too, okay? So um, good reliability because all of our participants experienced the same standardized procedures that involved creating a very bored experience. Application. Useful strategies when we have to concentrate and we don't want to, for example, um, if we are in a lecture and we need to kind of remember the information and we are falling asleep, it's easy to say, hey, I remember Andrade's study on doodling. We have to doodle and I'll remember more information. So um, that's where we can use and apply this in the real world. Validity. So, um, we do have operational definitions of doodling and what doodling looked like, and that's also going to increase the validity. There was a, um, a bias in the sampling because they were all volunteers. Um, so that's going to decrease the validity of the study. I'm also going to say that we have low ecological validity or low external validity because it's not a normal situation. You're not normally led to sit down in an environment and listen to a phone call and then get a quiz on that phone call. Okay. The ethics of Andrade. Participants were able to give full informed consent and they were given an unexpected test on names and places. So there was a little bit of deception in there. But the deception was necessary to withhold demand characteristics. It is important to know that they did debrief in Andrade. Okay. Now let's talk about Laney and false memories. Okay. So um, our generalizability of Laney. Now they were they were university students, even though they were from two different universities, they're still university students. And this introduces variables that could reduce the validity because we have no idea what their background is. Okay. Students might re uh, react differently to false information. 
They might be more or less impressionable. Okay. Someone who is younger might believe something more than someone who is older or vice versa. Who knows? Basically, we can generalize this to male and female college students um, in the United States, I will say. Reliability. Definitions and questionnaires were operation operationalized, which allowed Laney et al. to further standardize the collection of data within this experiment. This experiment was done in order to provide or to, prov to prove the reliability of the first experiment. So that's why Laney has two experiments. We are just proving the reliability in this second experiment. So yes, the reliability is good in Laney's study. Application. Laney demonstrates that it is possible to impact some people's attitudes towards asparagus. Also, false memories. This might be useful in getting kids to eat healthy foods by convincing them that they liked it or that they've eaten it before. I've used this with my kids all the time. Validity. This does have a high internal validity. Each questionnaire was standardized. The participants were tested in a standardized environment. This doesn't mean the experiment was completely valid just because the participants chose asparagus on a questionnaire. The ecological validity is low. Um, I've said this in another video. If they would have let the participants go to lunch and they had a um, just like a buffet of food and they went to see who could, um, you know, who was going to choose asparagus and basically walked around and they maybe looked at people's plates and if people chose asparagus, then boom, higher ecological validity in the study, okay? Okay. Ethics. Deception was involved in experiment one, not experiment two. Participants in experiment one were debriefed after the experiment, okay? So that's, that's basically the difference between the two studies for Laney. Overall, it's a good experiment, okay? How are you guys doing over here? What are you conjuring up? <laughs> All right, so we have... Baron Cohen. Okay, so let's do grave of Baron Cohen. The experimental sample of um, Baron of Baron Cohen's autistic group was very small. Therefore, we, when we generalize the results of research, we have to be aware that we have we can only generalize this to males, and they can only be males who are autistic and um, in the UK. Okay, the reliability. This was this was the revised version. So we are improving the reliability the reliability of this, and we deleted confusing words. Um, we got rid of semantic opposites. We added more male faces. Okay, we made the word choices better. This is going to improve the reliability. So we have good reliability in the study. Okay, application can't apply the results to everyday situation. Future research might choose to use videos of eyes, okay? This would improve the validity. It might be useful in understanding the genetic link between autism and lack of empathy. Did you hear what I said? The application, how can we use th the results of this negative correlation in everyday life? It's very difficult to because the ecological validity of it was very, very low. Okay, and that brings me to the next thing, which is our validity. Because it was a lab experiment, it did allow for a lot of um, control over confound variables that increased the validity, the internal validity. But we don't normally look at people and determine their emotions based on two-dimensional flat black and white pictures of people's faces, right? Okay. Ethics. There were really no ethical concerns here. It, there was informed consent. We had mostly um, opportunity and volunteers, and they were fully aware of what they were getting themselves into. There was no deception involved, um, and debriefing did occur. All right, guys. 
We have three left. And then you got to go study this grave for your exam. And remember, you are going to do the very last question first. That's going to involve grave, guys, right? Okay. Let's do Yamamoto, okay? Generalizability of Yamamoto. Was this generalizable? Well, we have to think about this. We have captive chimps. So we are generalizing this to captive chimpanzees only, okay? Um, so arguably, we're going to say that this has low generalizability. There were high levels of controls. The, um, the presentation of the objects on the trays were the same for each trial. The chimp had the same amount of time um, in each trial. So the reliability of this study was going to be really good. Application. Um, basically, we saw that there was targeted helping within species. How can we use this information to apply this to the real world? Well, we know that there is some cognitive similarities between chimpanzees and three-year-old children. So if chimpanzees can understand altruism and empathy, then it's very, very possible that three-year-olds can understand empathy and altruism. Um, and we've said this before in Baron Cohen, theory of mind happens between ages three and four. So if there's no empathy, if there's lack of empathy, then we know that there is something wrong or there's some kind type of um, chemical structure or imbalance in that child. All right. Validity. Since it was a repeated measures design, chimps participated in both the independent variables, reducing the risk of individual differences, um, but it also increased order effect. Okay. There was low ecological validity because of the artificial environment. But if we're talking about captive chimps, then it, it was high ecological validity, technically, because that's what they were used to. The ethics of the study. Um, this study was good. It was sound. It was approved by the Animal Research Committee. They were housed with their mother-child pairs. So um, there was no overcrowding. They're socially housed animals, and they were, so uh, they were housed socially. So there's no problems there. Okay. Let's do Milgram. So a problem with Milgram's generalizability is that all of our participants were male. Okay. Um, and they all came from some localized area. It was very, this is going to be very low in generalizability. Okay. There is some type of motivational bias um, because you know, there was, there was payment. You also have to know that there's no women in this study at all. Okay. So it's not going to be generalizable to women at all. Now we did have a lot of standardized procedures in this study. Oh, hi. Hold on. Where's daddy? That is sleeping. <gasps> okay, go. You go lay with daddy, and I I will be right there. I have two more to do. Okay. I will. Okay, I'll be right there. <laughs> oh, let's get through this. Okay, let's get through this. Um, a lot of standardized procedures. Everybody came in and did the exact same procedures. Drawing for lots. They were always the the teacher. They got that forty five volt shock. Okay, so we had good reliability in the study application. We can't really use this for anything, but maybe understanding the psyche in the sense that we have to kind of watch what we allow our children to experience and learn from such as violent video games, what we put on the news, what the violence that we show on TV. Okay. The validity. We don't have many controls for our participants. Okay. So the internal validity is going to be low. We have low mundane realism. We have low ecological validity. This isn't likely to happen in real life, at least not now. 
Okay. Maybe in World War II when we were talking about this, but this was done in 1963. This is about 20 years after the war. So um, I'm going to say that the ecological validity was low in this study. The ethics. The participants did not consent to a study on obedience, more so to a study on learning and memory. So the participants were repeatedly deceived throughout the study. They were led to believe that they were actually hurting the learner. Arguably, the participants weren't allowed to leave, which was the right to withdraw. So when I say that, it's because the participants were told that they could leave at any time and still get paid. But part of the experiment was keeping them there for longer and longer and seeing how long that they stayed. So that's kind of arguably the what is that? Is it did they have the right to leave? OK. Pilyavin's the last study that we're going to do for grave. OK. I hope you guys are still with me. I know you're conjuring something up over there on the side. My chat box is moving a mile a minute. All right. I won't put anything past you guys. <laughs> okay. Pilyavin. Now we have 4,450 participants, but did you know that our, our researchers did not actually count the participants? That was just based on previous research and statistics that were done on that subway station beforehand. That was the average amount of people in and out of there per day. Okay. So that we did not, um, you know, actively um, count 4,450 people even. Okay, guys. Um, and the percentage of black and white, that average of 65 and, well, I take that back. I mean, they did count people in the cart. Okay. But that number is very, um, it's, it's dramatized by the amount of people in the statistics that were used for the races and for, um, you know, the amount of people that use that station on a daily basis. Okay. Um, it, it's not like people were like, mm, you're black, uh, you're white, uh, you're black, uh, you're white. Okay. There was none of that. Okay, this was previous statistics that were used, okay? Um, there was a large number in our sample, but it was from an isolated population. So we're not, we're going to say that ethnocentric bias of some sort here and that we are not going to generalize this information, especially to the world. So reliability. Um, the main recorded measure of bystander helping was the number of helpers and how long it took to help. This quantitative measure ensured objective results and were made more reliable, basically by having two observers that inter uh, observer reliability. Okay, so that made the study more reliable. Ap application. Um, understanding the um, diffusion of responsibility or the bind standard effect actually exists, or understanding that it actually exists can basically give us insight into changing it, okay? So if we can understand that these crazy phenomena phenomenons happen, that we actually, you know, think everybody else is thinking something different, like, oh, he's going to help. Uh, he's probably stronger. I'm going to go. But everyone's thinking the same thing. If we can understand this, then we can p possibly break it and stop it from occurring, okay? Human behavior is always changing. It's very possible to change um, these theories and phenomenons. That's basically why psychology is not a science, technically. It's just, it's a lot of theories. Validity. It did have good eco ecological validity because um, the passengers were already there on their train like they normally would every single day, okay? Um, but there were no controls, so there was very, very low internal validity. Ethics. Um, the ethics were horrible. Our participants were naive. They did no informed consent. There was deception, possible psychological harm from seeing someone fall on the ground. They had no right to withdraw because the train was shut. They couldn't leave. There was no debriefing. Okay. So the ethics were horrible. Oh, oh goodness, guys. Okay. We made it through grave. You're going to go and do the very last question first. You're also going to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to come out with a lot more than just psychology content, just in case 
and a majority of you on know you're going to pass your paper. So you're only going to want to come back for that other supplemental psychology stuff that I teach you, all that stuff that you're going to learn in college. All right. So like my content, subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the future. And I can't wait to hear about everybody who passed their exam. Okay. Good luck, guys. Have a wonderful night.